Good morning. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Claire, for inviting me here to speak. It's a great pleasure to be here and to be able to talk to all of you. I will be talking about the power of television. The power of television. Television exists for nearly 100 years. It's a source of inspiration. It's a source of entertainment. It's a source of news, information. It created stars, celebrities, politicians. But most importantly, it entertains, entertains, entertains. And we all know that we live in an era of change, an era of transition, and we obviously know that it reflects, massively reflects on television. But the television is the medium that has been always disrupted and was always reinventing itself throughout the years, from introduction of color to rollout of international channels to rollout of pay television that created the appetite and the hunger for content and the understanding of the world to convergence and to obviously new technologies that are enabling us now to deliver the content and to deliver the TV content in any place and any time on any device. It's very hard to say what's going to happen in 2020s, what this era is going to be about, but there's definitely few trends that are already emerging. And those trends are aggregation, we heard about that, the importance of aggregation, the importance of creating alliances, sometimes between what we might think of as traditional enemies or competitors coming together with the new consumer propositions. And one of the most important uh, thing about that is this is in response to the consumer needs. This is in response to the consumers that are now today in a driving seat and are creating the demand and are having seemingly endless choices of choosing between different, uh, different content providers, different shows, and different platforms. So, talking about a little bit about, oh, sorry, that's already on, on screen. Talking about uh, Discovery. Uh, Discovery is a real life entertainment company. We are a mission driven company uh, that powers people's passions. I always thought and always strongly believed that innovation and entrepreneurial spirit is at the heart of our success and is at the heart of what has been what we could achieve and, and how we could roll out discovery across the globe. The world is changing today. We are living in a digital transformation and we are all on the journey. I'm not going to share anything new here. I think that we all live and breathe the same challenges. What I wanted to share today is to give you some insights of how we are approaching that and what are our learnings across the, across the region. But because um, I am for the first time speaking at this conference, I felt that it would be good to say who I am. So who I am? I run Discovery EMEA, as David introduced me a moment ago. Uh, it spans across four continents, 140 countries and territories from London to Vladivostok, across Central Asia, all the way to Cape Town, and includes Australia and New Zealand. It's a region of a vast differences, a huge diversity, from the richest to the poorest, from the wealthiest, uh, sorry, from the hottest to the coldest, through Western democracies, uh, kingdoms, um, a lot of cultures, different religions, different regulatory frameworks, and different ways of doing business. We talk to more than 300 million people on a monthly basis that watch, watch 3 billion hours of our content across nearly 200 channels and 50 channel brands. We have significantly scaled up over the last few years, increasing our audience through free-to-air, sports, factual, lifestyle, and entertainment. Our scale and geographical scope allows us to experiment and try different business models in different markets. We can test. If it works, we can roll it out. If not, we can change, adapt, and try again. 
There are a lot of similarities across the markets. There's a lot of similarities in terms of what the consumers are wanting, what are the ways of watching the content and their preferences and their choices. However, as many similarities, there are, this, as, there are the same numbers of differences. And we really know that there's no formula. There's no one size fits all in the world. And what's the most important, what's the most important takeaway for us is to be agile, getting uncomfortable, getting comfortable with uncomfortable, with the things that we don't know, with adapting to the things that we don't know, allowing for failure, and but learning from that and adapting. We're on a journey like every company, I guess, uh, TV company is today. We're on a journey from what was predominantly linear business to become an ecosystem of different products, operating uh, through free to air, pay, and digital. And this is the journey I'm gonna talk about. Every journey starts with something. Every transformation starts with a turning point, starts with the point where we stop and think about it and think, why do we need to change? And for us, this turning point came with the acquisition of Scripps Networks two years ago. Our scale has increased significantly at that time. Uh, we became an owner of a much bigger content portfolio, specifically focusing on on female target groups, gave us a lot of additional scale. We rolled out some of the iconic uh, brands, uh, Scripps brands like HDTV to a, a lot of European ma markets. In just one year, we were able to reach over 100 million households with HDTV. But most importantly, it created this moment of reflection. We looked at ourselves and we thought like, okay, what if we were looking at our company today as a new? What if we wanted to design it for the new world? Forget about everything in the past. Yes, we have a fantastic heritage, we have a fantastic business, but we are in the new reality. And that really triggered a change and transformation within our business. In order to drive the transformation through a region of that size, it doesn't come just with tactical moves, not just with changing the operation, it has to come with a sense of belonging from the people that are across 140 countries in different cultures, speak different languages. It has to come with a sense of purpose, the inspiration, and a real flag post to saying this is the change. This is, this is a different way we're going to be doing business. And that's where we build a new vision statement underpinned with uh, those values that you can see uh, on, uh, on the screen behind me. We build on our heritage of satisfying people's curiosity, but in a new way, based on a very deep in consumer insights, moving into powering people's passions through our networks, through our products, through our free to channels, pay and digital. So, there are a few aspects that are really important as we are engaging on this road to, on this journey to become more consumer focused, more direct to consumer and create all of those digital products. And I would say one is around building up scale. Scale is important because the consumers need to see it, you need to engage with your content on a much bigger, uh, bigger level than it was happening in the past. On the other hand, it's about a suite of products. And I wanted to talk about those two things right now. So scale, I mentioned scale on an EMEA level but obviously EMEA is based, uh, built out of markets, individual scale in the market. And I wanted just to mention, oops, it doesn't change. Doesn't work. <laughs> it changed, good. <laughs> I wanted to mention our journey in, U in the UK. Um, in the UK, we have really scaled up and diversified our business across the last 12 months. Our expansion has been focused on five strategic pillars. Audience reach, brands and products, distribution, digital, and commercial partnerships. In just two years, through Scripps, UK TV, but also through the rollout of our own, uh, own digital apps, we have doubled our audience in the UK. We increased our portfolio to 12 pay TV, ch uh, pay TV channels and six free-to-air brands, but we also launched a number of streaming services. Dplay, which I will be talking about in a moment, which is a viewing, uh, viewing service, 
as well as global cycling network for special communities of fun, for passion communities, golf TV, and moto trends. It has delivered a 100% increase in our commercial share, and we're now at nearly 8%. And this scaling is vital to our mission to create leading consumer destination that powers people's passion across factual, lifestyle, sports. It is also vital to create products to have depth and breadth to have end products that will super serve our partners in the market. Moving forward, I wanted to talk a little bit about those products. What are the products and what is the innovation and sometimes experimentation that we are going through? So first and foremost, um, it might seem as a lot of different products. I mentioned already that we have this ability of testing and adapting in different markets and really seeing whether, whether one product is working or not. But the most important, I think, uh, categorization and uh, to keep in mind is that we generally are looking into two categories of products. One are at heart viewing products. These are locally differentiation, differentiated products that are, have ability to scale up and in this uh, in this area, we have products like Dplay, TV and Player, which I will talk in a moment about a little bit more, Join, or for, uh, for that instance also Eurosport Player, although we might think it's specifically sports uh, dedicated uh, product, but it has a very, wide, uh, a very wide genres of different sports rights. On the other hand, we have the passion verticals. We call them view and do products. They provide both the viewing entertainment experience as well as functional doing experience. And this could be very, a lot of different things. It could be master classes, master cooking classes. This could be um, Tiger Wood master classes on, on golf or some other. This is really going into the head of a passionate fan of a given, uh, of a given genre, being that foot, motoring, or cycling, and thinking what they want more apart from viewing, what we can super serve to create a real community within this one app. So giving some of maybe more in-depth examples. I mentioned that I wanted to talk a little bit in Poland, uh, about Poland and, and the player. In Poland, we are a number one commercial broadcaster. Uh, we own the biggest media group, TDN, uh, that uh, operates 24 channels, including a number one uh, general entertainment uh, free-to-air channel, TDN. We have a whole host of different pay TV channels targeting every single target group, including two 24-7 news channels. Our news organization is really very big, and our news show, daily news show at 7 p.m. on TVN, called Fact Facts, is the biggest program on television in Poland, and on average has over 20% audience share every night. TVN also operated launch OTT platform already 10 years ago. However, this platform was really designed as an addition to, to television and to provide reach, advertising reach, to the television impacts. We embark on a journey of changing that, and changing that through a, a very big scale, traditional broadcaster. And I know that a lot of you around this room can sympathize with me how difficult that is. We decided to take them on board and do it together. It, is, it goes through everything, from changing the production cycle to producing to the schedule, linear schedule, and, produ and now producing always on, to changing the way we do marketing, from doing mass marketing and trying to bring the biggest audience in front of television at one hour, to really talking on individual basis to our consumers, and most importantly, getting feedback every day from them, what they don't like, mostly, because when people like it, they're not so willing to talk, to talk about it. And then also, it took a real change of mindset from our programming director, who, by the way, is a celebrity of his own in a market like Poland, to actually agree that we can premiere his high-end drama, his best programming on the player, even six months adv in advance to premiering on the linear channels. This windowing strategy has been very successful, and we were able to triple our subscriber base in Poland in only 12 months. We're the biggest local streaming platform in Poland. And that obviously creates a, a completely different momentum and a buy-in from the team. This is a journey. It's not the end. 
we are, we, are, uh, we are going on that journey, we'll see the results, but I must say it has been very, very successful. I wanted to spend just a second on Eurosport. I mentioned this is also our viewing, um, uh, our viewing app. What's most important, this is an app that, has, uh, that is present in 52 markets across Europe in 19 languages. And we have a very special year today because it's an Olympic year. This is our first Summer Olympics. We're going to be showing Tokyo 2020 across all of those markets in local languages. And talking about super fans and talking about communities of passions, this is the only place where the super fans of Olympics will be able to see every second, every minute of the Olympics. In the biggest production ever for Discovery, we will be showing, we will be producing 3,500 hours of Olympic content, which will be on the player, able to be accessed anytime, any place, on any device. So, if any of you is an Olympic fan, if this is what you want to see, please come. We are welcoming you to Eurosport Player. The other viewing uh, app which I wanted to mention, the other viewing product that I wanted to mention is Deeply. And Deeply is, uh, is uh, in an aggregation space, but our own aggregation space. So we, uh, we put all of our discovery content on Deeply. It's a regional product. It, at the core has one technology. We have one central group that does the technology, but we roll it out in a lot of different markets and we differentiate that through the local content. It's been the fastest growing product, digital product in the Nordics. We also introduced Deeplay in, in the UK, in the Netherlands, Italy, and Spain. In a passion communities, I already mentioned that, but one thing that I wanted to, to really mention is our difference. Why we believe so much in the passions? Why do we believe so much in this, uh, in this new products that we're putting for, for a very, I would say, well-defined groups of consumers? And this goes back to what we stand for, what discovery is. And discovery, the difference with discovery is we don't really compete in a very crowded scripted space. We don't really compete in a very crowded drama space. A lot of competition, not a huge loyalty. We already heard that people get lost in, in where, do I should, where should I find my series, my content. But what we know and what we really do best is actually super serving special interest to our loyal viewers. The loyalty and the stickiness of our, uh, of our products, of our channels and of our products is one which, is, which cannot be compared to anything else. So, moving forward, how does it really come together? And this, I must say, I've been really, really uh, happy to hear already. Uh, I think Karen said that. Um, we operate an ecosystem. We operate an ecosystem of linear, both global as well as local and digital. And we believe that this is the answer for the future. We believe that we don't uh, live in a, in, a, in a world which is either or, which I think already was mentioned today on the stage. But we are in a world of ad uh, additions. We are in the world of end and end. And every single product has its place and has its meaning to the consumer. With the depth of those products, we also have something new to offer to our long-standing partners and to the new partners. Because this is the content that will create loyalty, will create stickiness, and is now also available in a new product lineup that actually answers the consumer needs. At the end, I wanted to mention join. I wanted to mention our view on the aggregation. Again, it's not a new theme here today. We heard that uh, in other speeches already. We strongly believe that this is the moment for the local champions. This is the moment for the local broadcasters to come together to create alternative products to super serve local communities. These are complementary products to global streaming services that are focused on a, on a viewer, on a consumer in a given market. We know how well those audiences resonate, how well those audiences um, answer local content, how much they affiliate themselves with local content. In fact, we can see that on a Polish example. We can see that on the Polish example coming also from a different streaming platforms where Polish content is absolutely at the top. And this is what was really behind uh, this partnership that we forged with Prozieben in Germany. This is a joint venture that, was, that we set up together and is run by an independent uh, 
start, by the independent group of digital experts. We will join in uh, June 2019, and we have we combined uh, 15 content partners apart from Discovery and Crossiven, and 60 channels. We have both AVOT and SVOT tiers, and we are the fastest growing and one of the biggest AVOT streaming platforms in Germany with 7 million monthly active users and more than 6.5 million app downloads. We are continuing this approach. Uh, towards the end of 2019, we also announced a cooperation with the major broadcaster in Poland, Polsat, and between our group TVN. This is also to create an international streaming platform, but this time powered by the Polish content for the Polish viewers. We believe this is the moment. This is the moment of the aggregation. This is the moment where the broadcasters should come together, can come together. And we believe that we have the scale, the expertise, the, the weight to actually be the ones that can drive this change. This is obviously not easy and requires change of mindset, requires courage, and requires flexibility. It also requires a support from the regulators to see this new opportunity coming and to understand that the media, the new media of the world needs a, a new approach and a new support. So, to conclude, we live in the era of the consumer, in ever-changing world of consumer preferences, choices, demands. We need flexibility to adapt. We need this agility and we need to just take it and move it and try and, and change. But there's also a very good news for all of us in television. We have uh, conducted a survey in 13 countries across 13,000 of viewers asking them what is their major source of inspiration. And nine out of 10 people told us that TV is at their top source of inspiration. So with great content, with more content than ever, with so many different ways of bringing this content to the viewer and with so many new partnerships that we can champion, I think that there is a great future for us to deliver that much loved content and inspirational content to our viewers at any time, any place, and on any device. Thank you. Thanks, Kasia. A um, couple of questions. Um, the world that we worked in 20 years ago is much simpler. Much simpler. Um, and I remember you were the master of the big carriage deal. Uh, with the big platforms. Um, but now, you know, today we heard Sky's launching its own documentary channels. You're launching your own direct-to-consumer uh, services around MES. So at what point does the underlying business model of what was pay TV simply collapse and, and, it's, and, it, and the economics of the business change fundamentally? We seem to be there's two models coexisting, sort of in a slightly nervous way, but certainly at some point, the money just runs out. Well, I, as I mentioned in my, uh, in, in, in my speech, I truly believe that we're not in the era of either or. That each of those services and products have its place in a consumer mind and are consumed differently. And we can see that when we analyze the data between linear viewing and um, digital product viewing. Those are, well, there's obviously an overlap, but there are, those are different audiences. It's not exactly the same. Hence, our testing of, of different windowing methods, yes? That's why we can window the content both on, uh, on, uh, on the player and in a linear world at the same time. Having said that, I'm actually an optimist. I'm an optimist because we have so many different ways now to partner. And we heard from Sky a moment ago that those partnerships are really at the heart of what the platforms want to do. And this is why we also develop those products, because we have to answer to the needs of the viewers of our traditional, uh, traditional partners. To your point, I've been working with them for many, many years, and I think that this is, this is really coming together and creating products that will answer their needs. And Join's very interesting. I mean, you seem to be a bit further ahead than where some of the broadcasters are in the UK. I mean, do you think there are lessons that the UK broadcasters can learn about collaboration? I think that there are lessons. And, you know, the lesson number one is really this doesn't feel comfortable. 
very often because it doesn't feel for you know the big media groups uh, this type of uh, cooperation and and compromise because this is a 50-50 joint venture you have to come with, with a, uh, to, to it with a certain you know compromise it's not comfortable you have to be able you have to change the mindset and agree to feeling uncomfortable I think the reward is amazing but it doesn't always feel comfortable and to that respect we are creating a joint venture in, uh, in, in Poland as well as streaming joint venture with a product which is we own and operate, which is very, very strong. It is about thinking about this future. Great. We've got, I think we've got time for one question from the floor. If anyone wants to put up their hands, I think we've got one at the front from Kate. Hi, Kesha. It's Kate Bulkley. I'm a journalist. So you have a lot of different brands, and you talked about them. You know, there's lots of different. You know, you've got the passion brands, and you've got the big aggregation brands like Dplay. Uh, what about? I mean, it seems like there's a like a, a cacophony of choice out there. How are you going to actually make it easier to people to navigate? I mean, I was listening to what David Zasloff, the CEO, was talking about last week about putting the putting them together and sort of having an act, uh, like a like a king, a kingmaker app, like one app that has all that stuff. Is that what your vision is going forward as opposed to having all these verticals, you know, D plays over here, joins over here, you know, the, the motor thing is over there, the golf's over there. What do you, how do you see this happening? Because otherwise it's gonna just get so messy for consumers. Well, the way we see it, we really see two categories here. One is definitely, you know, one category and uh, the, the one that we, we believe is, is, is a model definitely in Europe is the aggregation. Join is an example. This, those are local aggregations. Those are products that, uh, that actually cater to local needs with local content, are engines also for local content production because they produce their own exclusive content which is in, within the market for the local audiences. So that, and this could be either the aggregation, either with third parties, as it is in the, in the case of Germany with Join and Poland with Polsat, or our own aggregation, like we have in, uh, in the Nordics or in the UK or in the Netherlands called uh, Dplay. However, we also believe, and, and this is an experiment, I don't think anybody has been doing that, but this comes from our core, from our tradition. We always were igniting imagination and passions. We, are, we were going after a group of viewers that uh, demanded more, that wanted to, to, to actually power their passions. And this is where those passion verticals go. But they go beyond viewing. This is not just a viewing experience. Yes, viewing is very important because it is entertainment. We are in the era of video viewing. And, uh, and viewing is hugely important, but it's really important for us to get into the mind of this consumer and think what they would want more. What is their interest? Is their interest in cycling? That insight for me was quite interesting when we first started, that there's a big sock community, that socks are very important <laughs> in the cycling community. Uh, there are some other, those are real insights into the minds of those consumers and adding that to this particular product. So they're kind of separate. They seem to be a lot of them because when you go after passions, Passions are individual, <laughs> so you cannot combine passions into one, yes? You're either passionate about it or not. So that's why it seems a lot, but I think if you categorize them, it's about scale and aggregation and, and view and do passionate communities. Well, Kasia, I think it's very clear, I'm sure, to our audience that you are <laughs> right in the middle of this massive shift that's going on in, in this industry globally. It's been wonderful to have the opportunity of hearing uh, from you today for the first time at the conference. I hope you come again. I hope you enjoyed being with us. Please uh, join me in thanking Kasia Kelly. Thank you very much.